coming. In this video, we will see the domain theory of ferromagnetism. Now we know how a ferromagnetic material will behave with respect to the applied field and the temperature. Uh, one of the most important uh, characteristic of uh, ferromagnetism is hysteresis curve. Hysteresis is nothing but a lagging behind uh, the property of one property with the other, with respect to the other. Here, the magnetization happening inside the material lags behind the external magnetic field. So that lagging property is called as hysteresis. And because of that property, we get a hysteresis loop. We will see what is a hysteresis loop. So when we plot um, uh, the relationship between the external applied field and the magnetic induction B, okay, it will not be linear because we apply the magnetic field and we are going to measure what is happening uh, inside the magnetic field. So B is the magnetization inside the magnetic, ferromagnetic material. So initially when H increases, B increases linearly. But as uh, time goes on, when H increases, what happens? Uh, B is not linear. There is a saturation. It reaches a saturation. So this is called as saturation magnetization. Okay. So at this point, even, even though we increase the uh, field, uh, strong field, this will not, B will not increase. So we call this as H maximum. Now, what we are doing? We um, we cancel, we slowly decrease the magnetic field. So, uh, measuring the uh, B simultaneously. Okay. So, we will name this O A. It will not retrace. So, for example, uh, during the magnetization. So, O A graph is called as magnetization. So, we make the magnetic flux lines pass through the material. So, it gets getting inside. But we have to see what is happening inside the material. Slowly we decrease the field. So it has to retrace the path. No? O, A. No? Uh, it will be replacing like um, retracing like A, O. But it is not like that. It is going to some other position. Okay. Let us uh, call it as B. So A, B is the demagnetization curve. So now slowly we uh, increase the magnetic field in the opposite direction. Okay, so this is minus H. So what happens? Slowly uh, the magnetic flux lines gets inside but it is in the opposite direction. Okay, so, so B drops and falls to 0. We call it as E. Next, we, we go on increase the magnetic field in the, in the opposite direction. So it increases and in the negative cycle also it goes to saturation. Minus H max. So we call this as plus H max and this is minus H max. So there is also a, a symmetrical curve observed. So you, the, in the first quadrant, uh, O A is the saturation. A is the saturation point like that. Here also it is more or less equal to A. That is this value. B saturation. So this is positive. This is negative. Minus B saturation. So this curve will be symmetric with each other. So now what we have to do? We, we will be decreasing the magnetic field in the negative direction. Slowly we decrease. Okay. It, it goes here. The curve goes here. So we will name it as uh, E, F, G. Next what we have to do? We, we will be magnetizing once again. Because this is a cycle. Once we take a material, we increase the field. We magnetize, demagnetize, magnetizing in the opposite direction. Then still magnetizing in the positive direction. So H, you slowly increase 0 to uh, the same value plus H max. So it goes, the curve reaches the same point O A. Okay. So this is a uh, magnetizing, demagnetizing cycle for a met ferromagnetic material. And, the, and this loop is called as, since hysteresis is observed. So what is hysteresis? The lagging behind property of B with respect to H. Why B lags? So, it, because of some reason, B is not um, following H. So, when H goes to 0 to maximum and it comes to 0, it is not coming to 0. B is not. The magnetic induction happening inside the material is not coming to 0 
so, so it is coming to somewhere else D. So what is the reason for that? So we call this as the hysteresis curve or the hysteresis loop. So what is happening actually? We, we give the magnetic field. So the flux lines getting inside the material. So we take away the field. So slowly the flux lines come coming out of the material. But not all the flux line comes out. So the material is uh, keeping some flux within it. So that is a residue. So we call it as OB. OB is called as residual magnetization. Okay. Next, um, it comes to, then it goes to 0 to E. So what is the meaning of OE? Uh, the, there is a resi residual magnetization or remanence. Remanence. So we have to uh, make this flux also to come out. So we have to make this OB value to 0. For that we increase H in the negative direction. So the OE is the negative field, applied field in the negative direction required to take the, pull the residual magnetism, pull all the flux outside of the ferromagnetic material. So OE is called as coercivity. Okay, so coerce, OB is B, magnetic induction, OE is the external field. So OE is the coercivity, so coercivity is the external field required to um, bring the residual magnetization to zero. Next, we, we will see what happens when it goes to minus H maximum. So that is a symmetrical curve. Uh, then magnetizing in the positive direction. So we got a loop. So what this loop indicates, the curve uh, traced by this, the, the area of this loop will tell you the loss. We call this loss as hysteresis loss and this is nothing but the heat dissipated heat dissipated uh, during this magnetization and demagnetization so what so we have to see what is happening inside so actually these we make the uh, dipoles to turn and do work so it is magnetizing and demagnetizing during this uh, cycle uh, the heat is uh, dissipated it is being lost so we call it as hysteresis loss next we will see what is the reason for this particular uh, curve So, initially the material will be like this. Ferromagnetic material will take a ferrous. Uh, the, um, uh, the ferrous atom will have um, magnetic moment even before the application of the magnetic field. So, there will be an alignment. And because of the Heisenberg's interaction, there is an interaction between the, uh, the spin magnetic moment of the neighboring lattice atoms. Okay, so because of, but this interaction is a very um, a, a nearby interaction. It cannot extend to the whole material. Uh, but, so, so the, the, the domain area is less. And these are called as domains. It cannot extend to the whole material. But uh, the, uh, there can be another interaction which makes the uh, spin magnetic moment in this direction. So there will be domains, many domains in different, different directions. Okay. There are many domains inside the ferromagnetic material. So when, when this ferromagnetic material is given an external magnetic field, what happens? So we give the magnetic field, we make the flux lines to pass through it. Initially, it, it starts from 0 to um, uh, Weber. We, we, we can say it is a 0.5 Weber, 1 Weber like that. We increase the magnetic field. So what happens? The magnetic moment which is in the same, the domains which is in the same direction of the applied field will increase in area at the expense of other neighboring domains. So what happens actually? It makes the other um, other uh, neighboring uh, spin moments or the valence electrons to turn along this direction. So the domain size increases. And the uh, if we increase the field still uh, stronger, what happens? This uh, domains 
turns the 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 spin turns and align in this particular direction so like this when we increase h what happens slowly all the spins align in the uh, applied field direction so this is the reason for increase in b b so as b increases slowly the flux line pass inside the material and uh, when uh, when this is in this point what happens slowly all the domains align in this direction and uh, this is a saturation point so what is the reason for saturation all the domains have aligned in this uh, externally applied field direction so that becomes um, b becomes saturated even if we increase the field further there are no more uh, dipoles to turn so it has reached the maximum saturated value so that is a reason for uh, b saturation now we slowly decrease the field external field h to 0 so what happens we decrease the field so the domains slowly which has turned initially let us assume that it is in this direction so slowly it go back to the original direction so b decreases b decreases like this so what um, makes the dipoles not to turn because the the because the heat is produced here heat is produced here so why the heat is produced because the dipoles are doing work it it uh, it turns in the uh, lattice uh, uh, so if there is a, a, a defect a point defect or some any any defects there is a hindrance in the motion so because of that heat is generated okay. and um, uh, it, it can come to the original position no no but it, it, it is not all the dipoles are not coming to the original position so uh, some dipoles which is in the opposite direction have turned in this direction let us see for example this will not turn to the original position like this it will stop somewhere else 